Since the explosion of the crop circle phenomenon in the late 1980s, much research has been done to try and unravel the answers to this intriguing and indeed controversial subject. Are they signs from unearthly sources? Are they just a natural yet unknown enigma? Or just fabricated art forms made by human hands? Researcher Rob Martins has been investigating crop circles since the early 1990s and I've travelled with him on many field trips to witness myself these strange yet incredible pictograms that appear predominantly in the fields of southern England. We're actually at the Beckhanton pictograms which I think are about four, four or five days old. Right, this is the shape of this pictogram that we're in now, as you can see. This one again I would have thought appeared on the same night as one we were in that up at the top, maybe three or four days old. In this film, Rob explains some of his findings, talks about his ongoing work with the phenomenon, and shows samples from the 2009 crop circle season. Just a quick run through of some crop circle samples from the 2009 season, um, back last summer. Uh, just to point out here, I've got some examples of normal standing crop, which is these pieces here, to show you how the crop would be standing before the crop circle turns up and then to the right we've got samples from two crop circles here of the crop after the crop circles formed. What you're seeing um, on this sample down here <coughs> is the crop has been bent okay and here you've got a few samples that I put together and the reason I did this was to show that it's almost as if the crop's been programmed uh, to bend into a certain angle. There's lots of pieces that all bent at this angle, but you know, over quite a broad area. These two samples here um, are kind of showing, because some people have pointed out, and it's true, that phototropism can cause crop to bend. And that tends to happen when the crop's been downed, say by natural means or by humans, and the crop head or from the first node to the head will tend to creep up back towards the light. Yeah? So you can pretty much know that that's phototropism and it's natural. It's um, yeah, it's the plant you know trying to come back up towards the light to, to do photosynthesis and stuff, yeah. But these two pieces here, <clears throat> you got the crop and it's bent and it's going back down again. So we can pretty much eliminate that it's uh, phototropism, so there's something very, very odd going on there. The other thing to point out is um, some people might, might not know, but the nodes, these points where the bends are, um, they're not bent and then they've gone loose. It's like they've been completely reset at a new angle. So if I do that, it's springy, it's been reset. So we're talking about overnight, thousands and thousands of pieces of crop in, in inside the crop circle in a geometric pattern have been completely the nodes have been reset into this new position okay so we're near Alton Barn we're just going up to Adam's grave we can have a look look around with Rob Let's see what we can find here so you can see it here so Woodborough Hill is um, the hill in the distance with the trees on top and then you've got this is Eastfield we're going up to um, between Golden Ball Hill and Knapp Hill. Um, people have had sort of apparently strange experiences up at Golden Ball Hill and between Knapp Hill. Um, it's a bit undefined what that is, but we're going to go up and have a look in the rapeseed field. You know, with, with the yellow in it, you can see uh, just see the remnants of the crop circle from last year. So they leave the imprint for, for many months. So. Uh, this is the 
Mayan headdress crop circle, as they call it, from July the 5th, I think it was, uh, 2009 at Silbury Hill. Huge formation. You can't really see here, but there's a person standing right at the bottom, so it's a very large formation. Okay. So you walked into this, and the first thing you do is you want to know if it's a human-made crop circle or if it's the genuine phenomena. And uh, contrary to what the press or the media tell people, yeah, there is definitely a, a real phenomena. And one of the things you look for is um, human-made crop circles tend to have the stems have been kind of broken. Uh, you know, they're bent over, but they're they're kind of crimped and broken. They're still intact, but if you pick up a crop, it's loose, so it's been trampled down. And real crop circles, the crop's actually still springy, but it's been laid down flat at a 90 degree angle. Okay. This is a good example of a 90 degree bend in a real crop circle. So you can see here, it's bending near to 90 degrees, and that is springy. So what's happened is, the node has been affected, and it's reset into a new angle. Okay, overnight. Uh, if you look at this one here, that's very unnatural. You've got a zigzag bend in that one. You see that? It's been bent into a zigzag, it's still springy. Yeah, and that doesn't happen to crop, it's not a natural phenomenon. Okay. And just to point out that some of what I'm saying is not conclusive because we'll be going back out again in the summer and trying to kind of find out more and ascertain um, you know, more details, cross verify. What, what, what we're finding, okay? What they have found, independent um, scientists, uh, particularly a guy called uh, Levin Good in the States, he's been studying crop circles 20 years, and he's analyzed these nodes, and they found evidence to suggest there's been a form of microwave energy has been used to heat the crop, so it softens on the node, and then it drops, but then there's another mechanism which seems to, um, another energy form, which is unknown, that seems to compress, flatten and swirl the crop into shapes and, uh, and, and designs. So, so what I did as, as a tester, I had an idea, I heard that Levin Good was suggesting that, um, so that the crop circles had a, had a form of microwave energy used in their creation. So what I did is I took some samples from a genuine crop circle, which is the Mayan headdress crop circle at Silbury Hill, and what I did, um, I had a piece of crop, this is an example, that was one piece, and the node points, these hard knuckles, yeah, had already shrunken down quite small. So when I originally went and found this sample, the knuckles had, been, uh, had expanded, yeah, so they'd been affected by an energy source, the, the, the knuckles are quite swollen and they had gone down to this size. So what I did is I got this sample here, I cut it in half, okay? I put this sample into my microwave and decided to heat it for 40 seconds on, on high power. Uh, didn't know what to expect. Um, took the sample out and amazingly, the node expanded back out again to the way it was when I first found it in the crop circle. So this is the same piece of same stem, been cut in half, one half in the microwave, and this is the original sample. And you can see there that the nose expanded out again. So that is, although that's not, not particularly scientific, that, that is suggesting, yes, there is a possible, uh, there's possibly microwave energy has been used um, in the creation of, of some crop circles. Yeah. This one again, I would have thought appeared on the same night as long with we were in up, up at the top, maybe three or four days old. The interesting feature down here, if you look down, is that you've got a stone in the ground and the corn's actually gone, when it's laid, laid down flat, it's gone around it as opposed to over the top of it. It's quite a nice feature. That's the fake one I was talking about. Sorry, that one. That's actually really well done. It's like a basket weed pattern. Just want to show show people um, one of the things you look for to determine um, a real crop circle and one created by humans, okay? Right, this is what happens with a human-made crop circle. There's a crop's upright, they use a plank and a board, yeah, and it gets 
push down and what happens is the corn crimps just above the hard knuckle of the node on the softest part of the crop because it's hollow so it's actually crimped and broken it's, it's still intact but it's got no tension in it it's completely loose yeah? you can pretty much tell a real crop circle by looking for that feature and we found one at uh, Eastfield in Alton Barnes the whole crop circle has been bent in that way so it's pretty certain that that's, all, that's been done by humans using a board something that we haven't um, been able to catalogue yet is apparently you, you get board marks on crop which means you can see on young crop when it's green uh, the board marks where people have used a board and a rope you can see it as little faint white lines about sort of a third of the way out of the crop so I'm going to get some examples of that this year just to sort of show the difference yeah. so that's what happens to a human made crop circle just above or below the node normally yeah it's floppy it's broken I'll show you an example of one from a real crop circle. It's bent, but it's springy. It's been completely reset. So this, this sample would have been completely standing upright, and overnight the crop's been affected in a crop circle, in a genuine one, yeah? And this node has been altered, so it's bent right over. So that hasn't been bent by fingers, by hand. You can't actually do it on, on, on a node on a piece of crop. So that's hard, it's been reset, and all the samples in the crop circle were laying flat like that. Really looking forward to the 2010 season. There should be um, crop circles appearing in rapeseed plant in the next sort of, sort of couple of weeks. Uh, plenty more questions to ask, um, and plenty of evidence to, to try and gather, uh, to sort of show people that there's a lot more to it than the media would suggest, and, and there really is a lot more to it.